next example I want to cover is the snow and rain example. Now, in previous versions of Nuke, the snow and rain boxes have been separate, but now they're combined into a single preset system that can be used to create both snow and rain effects. So let's jump over into Nuke and take a look at how you do that. Of course, the first thing that we need to do in this case is track the scene in order to give us a camera, which we can then use to render our snow and rain effects through. This is what I'm doing in this top backdrop here, and the camera is then coming down this left-hand side. In the snow and rain backdrops, you'll notice that the nodes involved are exactly the same. We're essentially creating a particle system, transforming it into place, adding it to a scene containing that tracked camera and a ground plane, rendering it out, and then grading it. Now underneath both the snow and the rain boxes we have this switch, and this is essentially choosing which particle system is active at any one time. So if this is set to 0, the snow is active, and if it's set to 1, the rain is active. So I'm going to set that back to 0 and jump up to take a look at the properties involved in the particle system. Let's start by taking a look at the snow. So inside of this node you can see the properties are arranged into three separate tabs. We have the emitter, which contains controls for the emitter size, the particle system scale. We have the look tab, which contains controls for the images used, the amount of particles, their life, size and opacity. And then finally we have a forces tab, which contains different forces such as the velocity, the gravity, the turbulence forces and also wind. And simply by making very small changes to these values, we can switch between extremely different particle systems. If we take another look at the systems themselves, you can see that for the snow, the particles seem to almost hang in the air, they're not really falling very quickly whatsoever. Compared to the rain system, which contains many more particles falling extremely quickly with some kind of motion blurred tail. So let's compare the properties of the two particle systems. At the top here, I have the properties for the snow box. In the middle, I have the properties of the rain box. And at the bottom here, I have that switch node allowing me to switch between the two. Now the emitter sizes for both particle systems are exactly the same. It's only in the look and the forces tabs that the changes really start to become evident. First of all, the big comparison is that the snow particles are much bigger than the rain particles. And they have this kind of soft effect to them. So that's achieved in a couple of ways. First of all, the snow size is much bigger than the rain size, but also the image blur in the snow is much bigger than in the rain, which gives this kind of nice soft fall off effect. Whereas over in the rain system, the particles are a little bit harder and then motion blurred a little bit later down the line. The next way that the systems change is over in the forces tab. The snow, as we mentioned before, kind of hangs in the air, whereas the rain is very quickly falling down to the ground. That's achieved in two ways. First of all, this initial velocity value. In the snow system, this is quite low. It's only a very tiny amount of kind of downwards force being applied to the particles. Compare this to the rain system, where the value is about five times greater. There's also a greater drag value up here in the snow system. This value is essentially preventing quick movement in the system, so the particles are hanging in the air. Compare this again to the rain, where the drag is zero and the particles are allowed to fall as quickly as they can. The final change is in the turbulence values. There is a little bit of turbulence up here in the snow node, but none whatsoever in the rain, again adding to that nice big heavy rainstorm effect. Switching back now to have a look at the systems rendered out, you can see exactly where those changes have come into effect. The snow is just hanging there in the air compared to the rain which is much more quickly plummeting towards the ground. Now that we know how the systems are created, let's finish off our comp. One of the things I do want to draw attention to is the motion blur on the rain system. Now to achieve that, I'm actually using the multi-sample tab here in the scanline render node, and specifically the samples property. Now if I set this to 1, which is the default, you can see that the rain particles appear as essentially very, very tiny dots, uh, not too dissimilar to the snow system. However, upping the samples value to 25 is a little bit like keeping the shutter open on your camera. You're going to add motion blur to whatever objects are being rendered out through that node. And it works really well in this case for the rain system, albeit at a cost of slightly larger render times. With that done, all that I'm then doing is grading the systems individually before compositing them back over the main plate. So that's a quick look at the new snow and rain particle preset that now ships with Nuke. <laughs>